BP on the move and State Bank. We never forget it's your money. Tonight on Saturday Night Replay, we journey out to Windy Hill for the match of the day between Essendon and Melbourne. The Bombers were determined to continue their good form of last week in the West, while Melbourne was just as determined to make it two in a row. Also tonight, Scott Palmer with all today's football news. And then we go to Moorabbin, where St Kilda was looking to make history by recording their second successive win in the opening two rounds. Their opponents, Carlton, however, were keen to make amends for last week and climb off the bottom of the ladder. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Saturday Night Replay, and what a round of football we've got going. It's the second of the 89 season, and, of course, it does continue tomorrow. Let's not keep you in suspense. We'll get straight down to the action as a packed house filled the Essendon ground, Windy Hill, this afternoon for the Bombers' clash with Melbourne, both winners in the first round of this year's home and away matches, but Essendon probably going in as slight favourites. Melbourne did have their injury problems, so too did Essendon. Paul Salmon was a late withdrawal from the team. His place was taken by Trevor Spencer. It was a great game of football, particularly in the first half. Joining me in the commentary position were Ian Robertson and as Ross Glendinning as we go to highlights of the first quarter. Solid work going there with Andrew Underwood. I shall certainly a chance. High drop punt. Pretty close. Goal umpire right near the goalpost. It's through. Plain. Great tackle. Blown is the ball. It comes to Buick at 60 metres. He goes long in towards Danaher. The bouncing ball. So a throw in again. Steins trying to use the body. Madden. Bit of aerial ping pong. Connolly, a hurried snap. I think he's kicked it. Blown is the call. He couldn't take the mark. Andromus a chance to make amends. Spins round quickly, then goes long, deep into the attacking area. Plenty of flies. Anyone waiting down? Spawn. The hand pass is on. And the hurry to fly. Yes, in the first quarter, it was real pressure cooker stuff. Essendon did gain a slight ascendancy, and at quarter time, they led 4-2, 26 to Melbourne, 2-3, 15. As we go forward now to the second quarter, and still it was very close, and it was very tight, as we pick up that quarter with just under seven minutes of play remaining. Melbourne has it in their attacking zone. They trail by just 10 points. Walsh gets the hand pass away to Folds. A high floating kick. Considine's got to stand his ground. In fact, he almost lost it on that occasion. Flicked out the back. Illegal. The umpire. And so it'll go back to Ed Considine. Looking to get Essendon out of trouble. The lovely torpedo punt. Vanderhaar will be the player. That could have hurt Paul Vanderhaar because he landed flat on his back as Johnson whisks away for the Demons with a couple of bounces. Draws the play, then goes with the hand pass over the top to O'Dwyer. Vanderhaar is not moving behind Clay as Walsh takes the mark. He did land very heavily. In fact, he and Tim Watson were the ones that collided mid-air. Fortunately, Vanderhaar coming off second best, landing right on his back. Danaher's kick. This time to half forward. And it's a depleted area at the moment with Vanderhaar in the hands of the trainers. Could have just been winded, however. And he's back up on his feet. 50. So 50 metre penalty being paid against Anderson. Brings Johnson up to within 55 metres of goal. And Melbourne really have struggled up on their forward line. Obviously missing Gary Lyon. Johnson goes for the torpedo. Beautiful kick by Johnson. Oh. Is a goal! <laughs> oh. well, we've, we've spoken about it quite a few times this year, or I have as such, through the Panasonic matches and last week against Fitzroy and Alan Johnson, the fine kick of the football. And that's certainly going at least 60 metres. Some torpedoes working very well today. Anthony Danner out of fullback. And it's a good day for torpedoes. And uh, it's certainly been justified there. Beauty, wasn't it? And a much needed goal, too, for the Melbourne Football Club. The Demons right back in the thick of things. Just four points the margin, and they go forward again through Connolly, down towards the half forward line. Folds beaten for the football, and Healy will have a shot inside 50. 
Now he's going to go short. Dolly drifted down into that pocket and he's claimed. Oh, saying it was oh, deliberate. Rubbish. <laughs> Settle down, gentlemen. He's made the decision. Play on is the call. Danaher goes dangerously right across the face of goal, putting pressure on Kevin Walsh. He is equal to the task, however, and finds Kieran Spawn on the halfback flank. Spawn going towards Michael Long. Marks in front of Grinton. Long's kick to the 50 metre line. Watson unable to mark. Anderson, the left footer, clear. Shoots towards goal. Paul Vanderhaar has had a clutch on his fortunes today with his marking. On that occasion, he almost held it, came to ground because he was in front. First opportunity, second bite of the cherry, and put it right through. And I was about to say, prior to that, that Melbourne are showing the sort of form that they have so far coming back under pressure. But uh, it's an equal to the task, and we have Anderson kicking forward to Paul Vanderhaar, who had to go for the mark, couldn't try and shepherd, spilling the ball, and a uh, little left foot chip at goal. Back in the centre, road. His kick is smothered. Anderson, quick kick to half forward. Long, magical. Michael Long from 50. High one. Look at the square. The great mark has been taken by Campbell. That's fair. Good use of the body. Campbell plays on. Kicks it towards half back. Oh, sensational mark to Anderson. He's come into the play in the last minute and a half and showing all of his form from over the borderline. The Gary medalist. Beautiful long kick into the... It's a goal! All clear. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. of who you are Father to son It's what we've always done To let the best of men to get On so many faces It's plain to see Contour Plus with lubricating strip for the best a man can get. I love my car. It's old, slow. I never thought about insuring it. What was the point? It wasn't worth that much. Jumped in the car, off down the street. Turn left, there's a car stopped in front of me. Wham! 3,000 bucks down the track. My fault. A merc. SIO third party property for around a hundred bucks. Pity I didn't know about that before. <laughs> Sorry. You know how it is. It's a bit wet over there. A bit wet over here too. Let me get some drinks. No, let me. Waiter, drinks all around. Well, if we're going to make a party of it, let's nibble Nobby's nuts. Sorry. We made Kino even better with nine extra ways to win every day. And it's still only a dollar a game. Kino, now with more ways to put a smile on your face.
So a grand game of football continues. Terry Danaher sockers it down towards the Essendon forward line. Watson is there. The Melbourne defence under tremendous pressure. And Lovett picks it up and with a very intelligent kick finds the boundary. The crowd has really had a great afternoon so far. And we're not even halfway. O'Dwyer. Spencer, Considine from the side. Spawn cop one high. And will be free kick. We've got CO and Tony Campbell interchanging. Campbell now to full forward, CO to full back. Spawn's kick. Banterhart. Oh. Given away the free kick. CO. First goal, and by geez, he quick. Shows the value of getting away quickly with those first couple of yards, then steadying. Could have gone on his left foot, but did the right thing, an extra step, steady to his right, and didn't miss. And has that not given Essendon some fire going to the half-time break? Yes, with uh, one and a half minutes left until the main break. Essendon's got a handy advantage now, 22 points. And boy, settle down, lady. <laughs> Madden gets the tap out. He's killed Steins and O'Dwyer. Out the back by Rowe to Grinder. Clever enough to get his kick up towards half forward. Grenvold, poor bounce for that player. Tony Danaher, brilliant football. Off to Anderson. Anderson kicks towards centre half forward and a mark to Johnson. Alan Johnson at centre half back, plays on quickly. Kicks it towards half forward. Not a bad kick. Eichold could have nearly been paid. Plays it on in front of himself. Fighting hard, Sharon comes out the back to Wilson. Tackled, but he gets it off to Connolly. Connolly's quick kick towards full forward. Chance there for Healy. Now Eichold again. Well tackled by O'Donnell. Brilliant tackle. And O'Donnell will take the free kick in the back pocket for Essendon. value of desperate stuff by the Essen back pocket player. Goes straight across the ground. Madden takes the mark. He's got Walsh in support. Good position made by Kevin Walsh and he takes the mark at half back. Plays on quickly. In towards the centre. May come unstuck. Stretch. A little bit too high for Steins. Off the ground Steins. He's down behind play. His kick has gone over the boundary line to the throw in the forward pocket. Picks himself up as the siren sounds to end the second quarter. Essendon at half time lead by 22 points. Essendon 8-5. It's on again. Melbourne 4 7 31 and another dust up. Well, it's a game, Ian, that has had everything in this first half. We've had Essendon put down to just 18 players now. And the umpire's gone down. The umpire is down. Goodness me. Well, they're going to have to do something about this very quickly. The, the second umpire, Clayton, is at the moment trying to get some form of law and order established. But there are probably 35 players there, all milling round. The only one standing out is Rodney Grinter. And the umpire is still flat on his back. What a dramatic end to this second quarter. Players are now starting to gather into their respect sides. Kevin Cheedy, not saying a word, just uh, wandering over it. You might be able to see this again in replay. If you look right on the edge of frame at this replay, we might be able to see what's happening. Well, the umpires are always going to be susceptible to that sort of thing. They're so close to the action and there's arms, fists, hands, elbows flying. So no wonder it hasn't happened before. Well, there's certainly plenty of feeling.
You're gonna get your own holding. It's a run out. I can't afford it. Read my lips. It's the Chimera run out. Oh, mate, I don't know. Oh, it's made for you. Plenty of room, fuel injection, goes like the clappers. Mean on the juice, but. A new Chimera. Brand new. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. Like it. You love it! Oh, you love it! <laughs> the Holden Chimera run out is now on at your Holden dealer. Where do millions of jets, helicopters, planes, trains and trucks go when they're low on fuel? The same place you do. BP. BP. On the move. <laughs> Sorry! You know how it is. It's a bit wet over there. A bit wet over here, too. Let me get some drinks. No, let me. Wait up. Drinks all around. Well, if we're going to make a party of it, let's nibble Nobby's nuts. Sorry. You know, in my day, son, I had a shed full of tools. I've got more than a shed of tools. BE Hire. Everything a builder needs for the tradesman and home handyman. Do it yourself. BE Hire. It is the most sensational drama program in the history of Australian television. Each week you see amazing stories of human drama, intrigue and hope. But the most amazing thing of all is that the stories are true. Australia's Most Wanted recreates the most baffling crimes facing our police and you get a chance to solve them. Without knowing it, you might work with a criminal, travel in the same tram as one, drink with one. Viewers of Australia's Most Wanted have already helped police capture 12 fugitives. Watch the drama unfold each Sunday at 7.30, only on 7. And so at half-time, Essendon led 8-5-53, Melbourne 4-7-31. The margin was 22 points, but there was still really nothing in the game, and it was almost inevitable that there would be a boil-over. There was just so much tension in the game in that second quarter. The big question was, at that stage, who was going to gain the ascendancy in the third quarter? Let's go to that action now. The all-important third quarter is underway. Good bounce by umpire Clayton O'Dwyer. Punch away by the Essendon defence. Spalding over the top. Road. Johnson's hand pass has been smothered. Melbourne really struggling hard. Essendon putting lots and lots of pressure on. And the ball goes over for a boundary throw in on the outer wing. And Jim Stein's lining up at centre half forward for Melbourne in this third quarter. Mel Spalding centre half back on Terry Danaher. Madden behind. O'Dwyer gets the tap out. Considine can't break clear. I shoulder over the top. And umpire Clayton will come in and bounce. So if Melbourne are to mount something, it'll have to come in the first 10 or 15 minutes of this quarter, I would think. Trailing by 22 points at half time. O'Dwyer out the back. Kick by Lovett to centre half forward. No mark by Newport. He goes back after a kick off the ground by Walsh. Now a chance for Melbourne. Pick up by Walsh is good football. Forced to kick with the left foot towards half forward. Sharon somehow threads his way through. Kicks with the left. Up towards half forward. Steins gathered by Newport. Kicks quickly with the left foot. No mark taken. Punched away again by strong Essendon defence. Grenville. Spawn. Buick. Bizarre. Brilliant football by Essendon. Bizarre two bounces. Short chip pass, Spencer. 40 metres from goal. And in that passage of play, not one Melbourne player touched the football. That's a better, better result too from Alan Ezard. He did a similar sort of passage of play in the first quarter and just blazed away at goal, having a lead or missed a lead from Trevor Spencer, this time finding him and should be uh, a goal for Essendon. Spencer's kick comes back nicely. It's a goal. Trevor Spencer's promised a lot for Essendon in the ruck. 
I mean, Shooty's elected to play him all over the ground in the last few years, but I like him at, at full forward, particularly in the absence of Paul Salmon. Very tall player, mobile, good leap, good pair of hands, and showing there also a good kick. So, has all the attributes, just needs to be a little more consistent with that. Nine five plays four seven. Certainly the greatest margin we've seen in this game so far as Healy propels Melbourne into attack. They want a goal and want it badly. Could this be their chance? Hamilton gets back on the football at the back pocket region, and just a clever little kick on that outer side gets them another 25 metres out of strife and a throw in. It'll take place in front of the small scoreboard. Essendon fans would be pleased to see that. 59 to 31, but. Never write Melbourne off. They've developed into a great side in recent years. They'll have to show some of that greatness today if they are to get out of it. Hamilton again towards Antrobus. Applies a fierce tackle on Sharon. And by Clayton, heeding the advice from Tony Antrobus. Dynamite. Yep. Spawn. Looking for Spencer, who ran into trouble. And Melbourne again. Out of trouble on the outer side. O'Donnell has to come over the top after the kick from Peter Road went wide. Ezard now. Pulling it back. Healy is there. Dada! Well, he got up high, but couldn't bring the football down with him. It's a scramble. Eventually, Earl Spalding pops out the back door. Has a bounce. Draws clear and goes long. Up towards half forward. Eichold at the back. Campbell almost threw it out. Puts Wilson under pressure. He ducked his head. Play on as the call as Madden gets away. Into Michael Long. He gets there in time. A hand pass to Anderson. On his left foot, he pulls it back to half forward. Over the head of Vanderhaar it went. A chance for Dersma to clear. On to Johnson. Johnson, a long sweeping hand pass looking for Newport, but Considine intercept. Plays on. Back to Watson. He's almost at half forward. Passes into the pocket. Terry Nanahan, great football. Great football from Tim Watson with a fine pass. What a great mark by Terry Danaher. It's a hallmark of his game, marking like that in front of his eyes, in front of his face, hands out. No chance for Earl Sporting there. Terrifically strong hands does Terry Danaher have. Thirty-five metres out, perhaps a little more. He doesn't have a long run up, and he's put through a behind. Not hard to pick here at Windy Hill when there's a deathly silence. Yeah, <laughs> for goal. Nine six plays four seven. Uh, probably deserved a little better. Co kicks in towards the back pocket. Healy takes the mark, looking for the hand pass over the top, finds Dersma. Dersma, again, onto Connolly, and the ball comes up towards the wing. Connolly kicks over the wing to half forward, and a good mark has been taken out there by Stretch. And Melbourne, nearly within scoring distance. Stretch will do that, kicks it to within 35 metres. Steins can't break away, gets the hand pass away from himself, but no one can break clear, and the umpire will come in and bounce. Great to see umpire Sheehan recover from that uh, slight altercation right on the half-time siren and he bounces the ball at half forward for Melbourne. Comes out the back to Anderson. Clever footballer is Anderson. He gets it off very creatively to Izard. Izard dashes away, kicks it wide and the skipper takes the mark. Watson at half forward. He plays on quickly. Long kick towards full forward. Nearly a spectacular mark to Antropus from behind. He interferes with Spalding in doing so. And Spalding takes the free kick at centre half back to Melbourne. From a standing start, kicks it towards the centre of the ground, and a mark has been taken by Connolly. Plays on. Johnson in the centre. Melbourne looking to raise something. Johnson towards full forward. Great bar taken by Tony Danaher. And he's played a perfect game at full back. Short passes on. Folds is at centre half back. He marks, plays on quickly. Loose player on centre wing out of sight is Ezard. Ezard his third possession in the quarter. Kicks towards half forward. Vanderhaar punched away by Dersma. Grint is there. So is Long. Hand pass out of oh, the back. Oh. Antrobus goes for goal. And hooks it just a little bit. And through for another behind. 
great hand for this spot. Excellent. Oh, terrific handball. As they say, great vision. And just a pity Tony Andrews said in not accelerating as he normally would, have sort of is more clear than what he actually was. Neil Danaher and Bill Duckworth keeping an eye on things from the bench as we're back with the action and Sharon to Newport. Keeps it in play. Hamilton front spot and a fine mark on the chest. And a rated player. From centre wing, Hamilton to a congested half forward zone over the head of Simon Madden. Terry Danaher. Grinter, a fist in the air, but straight to Considine. Watson trying to tap on. Sock it off the ground. The mark is taken by Peter Rode. Now Eichhol. Can Melbourne get a score? They need one badly. A chance here for Campbell. He shoots. He misses. Great pressure applied by Kevin Walsh. And Melbourne moved to 4-8, trailing Essendon 9-7. Tony Danaher again, who's given a faultless display almost at fullback. Stretch up a little early, spawn. Clear, just pulls it back for Van der Haar. To half forward again, looking for Spencer. In front of Seau, but couldn't take it. Watson wide to Izzard. He's dangerous here. A little chip into the pocket. Buick can play on if he wants to and run into the open goal. He shoots and he goals. Very clever play there from Essendon. Started with Kieran Spore on the wing here. Lovely chip pass. One of his eye to Paul Vanderhaar. Straight across then to Timmy Watson. And Darren Buick kicking his third goal. One in each of the three quarters played so far. And... He's been a good player today, Darren Buick, and the Essendon small players have been very effective. And we see Ricky Jackson off and Stephen Tingay on for Melbourne. So Essendon, very, very handy advantage now, 35 points. And more importantly, they've restricted Melbourne to just four goals. Come forward again through Terry Danaher. Bounce does not favour Johnson. Buick, a little bit too fancy, but he goes after it again. Out wide, long. Short kick is good. Antropus takes the mark deep in the pocket. Perhaps would test Tony Antropus, I would think. He goes for the short one. Spencer. In the last five minutes, Essendon really showing their superiority. Spencer's angle. Goes the short one. Van der Haar takes the mark. Perhaps a little closer, but most definitely the angle. Much better than Spencer's. 10 7 Essendon plays 4 8. Van der Haar punts for goal. Drop punt, okay. Another one to the Bombers. A winning quarter for Essendon on that occasion as they booted five goals for, but perhaps more importantly, restricted Melbourne to just four behind. So at three quarter time, it was Essendon 13 9 to Melbourne. A very miserable scoreline of four goals, 11. The big question was, could Melbourne put some respectability back onto the scoreboard in the final quarter? Well, let's have a look now at the highlights of that quarter. The high kick is by Tingay into the pocket. Danaher dives. A chance now for Steins. He picks it up, hooks back into goal. Good-looking kick. Great goal by the big man. Grinter leaves it for Rode. To half forward, Grenvold in front of the pack, stands his ground, taken by Newport, a snap at goal, pretty good looking kick this, his goal, his hand pass, taken by Sharon, a high kick, and a good mark, taken at half forward by Newport. So Newport directly in front, some 38 metres out, kicks for goal, and kicks truly. Madden. Breaks free of the trainers, takes the mark at half forward, goes for goal, unselfishly to Van der Haar, and Van der Haar gets the mark for the Bombers. Yes, the Essendon fans delighted to see Paul Van der Haar in action and doing it well. 14 10 94 Essendon to Melbourne, 9 14 68 was the final scoreline. Paul Van der Haar, incidentally, 
finished the day with four goals. A good performance up forward after Salmon had pulled out prior to the match beginning. Darren Buick booted three. Terry Williams, Terry Danaher and Darren Williams picked up a couple for Melbourne. It was a very different story. Steve Newport three and Jim Steins two. We'll take a break. We've got plenty to come though in Saturday Night Replay, including all the action from Moorabbin and the big game between St Kilda and Carlton. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far. We know how to make the most of who you are. Father to son, it's what we've always done. To let the best of men to get. On so many faces. It's plain to see We give you all we have to give For all a man can be Where the race is run You're the champion Gillette the Gillette Contour Plus with get. lubricating strip Gillette For the best a man can get The difference between other mid-size microwaves, other mid-size microwaves, and Panasonic's mid-size Genius starts with the size. Because the reliable Genius is full-size inside with a turntable that's larger than you'd expect. 35% larger. Same cooking area as other people's full-size models. So now there's an even smarter Genius that's mid-size outside, full-size inside. Even more than you expected. Test your IQ. Question, what's the difference between the Pulsar Q and the Quarian? <coughs> Answer, the Quarian is not backed by a two-year or 40,000 kilometer no-cost warranty. <coughs> Question, what's the difference between Nissan Pulsar and other small cars? Answer, Pulsar is the one that Car Australia has named best small car two years running. That's quite a car. That's Nissan know-how. Sunday on Disney. Alone, surrounded by the enemy with no help on the way. It's a Crockett cliffhanger. Uncle Toby's presents the exciting conclusion of Rainbow in the Thunder. 6.30 Sunday on the magical world of Disney. Here's the TAPS 2 results. Just drawn under government supervision. Welcome back to Saturday Night Replay and let's now journey down to Moorabbin. St Kilda and Carlton. St Kilda were looking to rewrite the history books by winning their first two home and away matches successively. A big task. And Carlton, on the other hand, were looking to get back into winning streak after a disappointing performance against Footscray last week. They brought back several big guns. Let's join almost 28,000 people down at Moorabbin and go through the highlights of the first three quarters of the match. 70 metres from goal. Low and Lockett are both there. Low from the back. Lockett! Well, what a display. This will test him. 50 metres out. Oh! <laughs> He's knocked it through over post height for number three. Hand pass comes back to uh, Grant. That was from Craven. Winmar high. Also, Hannah. Madden shuffles out the hand pass. Gleason to Hannah. Hannah on the run. Good long kick. A beauty. Lascott going for distance now. Deep towards full forward. Madden too tall. But Carlton winning on the scoreboard. Madden gets his second goal. St Kilda by a point. Harding in front. One down brilliantly though by Madden. Naley's hand pass intercepted by Coglin. There's the time remaining. Aitken snaps back, looks good. Another goal to the Blues. Comes up the ground to Coglin. Coglin from a standing start. Low with Doritich. Goes to the front of the pack. Harvey, good hand pass. Winmar should go. It comes back. 
Sends it right half forward for Carlton. Madden back towards the middle. Murphy, a high kick. They can test about 25 metres out. Aitken, it's been paid. Very kind. I think the umpire might have been caught on the blind side then. This will be a handy one. Good kick. The Blues are back in front. Fantastic goal by Bowie. Near the Ruckman get it. Winmar hands to it. Spills out here to Rice. Looks for Lockett, one out. He's got it again. This is pretty wide out, but only about 35 metres from goal. He's got that one. Dorotich kicks in, straight up the centre. Hannah flies at the front. Oh, Harvey picks up and dashes straight for goal and goes bang. 42 seconds on the clock. Stuart Lowe's kick. Not great distance, just over the wing. Winmar! What a mark by the little Nicky Winmar. This is Gleason. Great tackle by Coughlin to Burke. Rice on the overlap. Spears a pass into the rocket. Oh, great football. Can he finish it with a goal? Yes, he can. Kernahan, back to Reese Jones, on centre wing. Daniels closes the gap, the kick to half forward, Naley a spoil, free kick to Naley, it comes to Johnson, advantage paid, goes to Glascott, and from 50 metres, Glascott goals! Or improve his angle. Distance, no bother. Around he goes, and kicks it! And at three-quarter time, St Kilda 9-15-69, dead level with Carlton 10-9-69 in a seesawing, absorbing struggle. A tremendous game of football and a crowd of almost 28,000 fans absolutely absorbed. Could St Kilda retain their unbeaten run or was Carlton to record its first win for the season? We'll find out when we return. The difference between other mid-size microwaves, other mid-size microwaves, and Panasonic's mid-size genius starts with the size. Because the reliable genius is full-size inside with a turntable that's larger than you'd expect. 35% larger. Same cooking area as other people's full-size models. So now there's an even smarter genius that's mid-size outside, full-size inside. Panasonic. Even more than you expected. Look, the engine just won't start. Can you come and pick me up, please? Sure. Come on, kids, let's go rescue Dad. The Mitsubishi Colt. Fun to drive. Incredible value and economy. And so dependable and reliable. Hi there, need a lift? <laughs> Very funny. Ah, I suppose we better get a tow. Or another Colt. Two shows. Now there's a product to positively reduce oil consumption and exhaust smoking. Winds Charge. The long chain polymer in charge boosts oil viscosity. This reduces oil consumption and ugly exhaust smoking. Winds Charge also reduces wear, quiets noisy engines and improves performance. Add Winds Charge to your car's engine today. Because when it's winds, 
it works. From leading service stations and auto stores. A deadly challenge. Take the wheel, we're both dead. A mysterious phone call. You'll find Sarah in the lake. A missing body and Perry Mason's on the case. I'll handle him. A case fraught with danger and more guilty looking suspects than ever before. People have been known to take bad falls around here. So take up the challenge. Join Perry Mason for a baffling brand new mystery. You've drawn a losing card, I think. The game's not over yet, counsel. The case of the lady in the lake. Presented by Elders IXL. Sunday on 7. And so to the final quarter at Moorabbin. Let us now rejoin our commentators, Drew Morfitt, Dennis Cometti and Bernie Quinlan. And we pick up play early in the final quarter. The scores remain unchanged. St Kilda, if anything, with a slight breeze in this last quarter. Scores level and this ball up right on the edge of the goal square. Clean possession low but can't get boot to ball. Naley out of defence for the Blues but he's kicked into the crowd. Out of bounds. Now it's in the hands of Daniels for St Kilda. Not a great kick. He passes in. That's slow motion. The umpire's going to make him do it again. Setting Madden on the mark. St Kilda's poor kicking has let them down. They should have led. Tony Lockett has six goals, six. Daniels puts it up towards the goal square. Lockett close! He's just unstoppable, Tony Lockett. Playing so, on one of the best fullbacks in the game. Silvani has been his opponent all day. Lockett kicked three in the first quarter, one in the second, two in the third. This now for number seven. Great stuff, Tony Lockett. Brilliant exhibition apart from his kicking. And it's seven goals is a good day's work, and he's probably not finished yet. Seven out of ten to Tony Lockett. And the Saints lead by six points. They led by eight points at quarter time, seven at half time. The Blues came back in the third term to level the scores after the Saints got out to lead by 16 points midway through that term. Back in the middle, one down by Harding. Winmar wide of the congestion. Coglin slaps it away. It's taken by Glasgow. Towards half forward goes the kick. Bounces once and goes out of bounds. Some of the marking today has been quite superb. Lockett, seven goals. And that duel has been so entertaining. The honours certainly with Lockett. Coglin didn't have the ball surely. And he's going to get the free kick. He's worked hard today too, Frank Coughlin. Away he goes, loves to run. Second bounce, up to the middle. Penetrating kick. Dorotich is on report. Reese Jones gets it to Hunter. Dwyer, off Trevor. Goal number eight. Locker hits the post, running into an open goal. Dear, oh dear. Why kick it on the left foot, Dennis? He had plenty of time to steady and bang it with that right foot. Just relax too much, Tony Lockett. Well, that's seven goals, seven, and one out of bounds. Hunter marks the short kick in. St Kilda now with a seven-point break. Slight breeze behind, but the game's certainly not over yet. Dorotich. Oh, has to be a throw. The umpire says it was a throw by Lowe, and the free kick to Dorotich. Reported in the third quarter for an incident with Stuart Lowe. Who came up very sore and sorry for himself. Dorotich to half forward. Courage shown by Sheldon to back into them. Here's little Danny Craven. The rover from Wangaratta. Winmar spoiled by Glasgow. It comes back to Nicky Winmar. He puts it through to Coglin. Great place in Kilda. Rice. Long kick. Lock it in the goal square. Well, on that occasion, Lockett decided not to lead. Silvani was expecting to lead and uh, was led under the ball. Lockett just sat back there and took the easy chest mark. Lockett comes in for number eight. And quite a break for St Kilda if he can get it. And a 
great start to this last quarter by St Kilda. Two goals to lock it. It should have been three. But a great performance by Tony Lockett on that forward line. Nine goals last week. And carrying on the good work this week. His no. statistics work going through. 12 marks, 16 kicks, two hand passes, and eight goals, seven. The ground's a buzz. The Saints, a chance to make it two in a row to start the season. Had slipped away to lead by 13 points now. Back in the middle. Harding and Madden, one by the ladder. Knocked on by Burke, kicked on there by Lowe towards half forward. Awkward bounce for Bowie down there. Kennedy scrambles it back towards midfield. Madden couldn't hang on, falls at his feet. They battle after it. Murphy towards half forward. Good mark, taken by Sheldon. He's played well in defence. Sweeping hand pass. This is Grant. Not a good kick, it wobbles through centre. Ricochets off Glasgow. Opportunity now for the little man out there, that's Craven. He was tackled, held to him, says the umpire. And will have a ball up alongside the centre circle. Johnston not happy. Craven has tried very hard. One of two very diminutive rovers for the Saints. He's been the pick of the two today. Can the Blues come back again? They've shown great courage a few times today. Madden got it down to Naley, but he's been penalised. Taken by Harding. Elphinston, the defender, has drifted up to the half-forward line. One and a half kicks to goal from there. Short pass for Lowe. He gets underneath it. Dorotich spoils. It comes to the back. A chance here for St Kilda. Snapped by Bowie. He's offline. And as they've done at the start of every quarter, St Kilda peppering away at the start of the quarter and once again not getting full value. They lead by 14 points. So in this quarter they've kicked 2-2. Silvani growing old this afternoon quickly. Hannah got his hands there. Couldn't take the mark. Naley was held without it. Naley from right half back. Very high kick towards half forward. Fawley in front, almost the mark. Battles on with Kernahan. And the umpire, no option. Kernahan started very well. Fawley's come back strongly. Hurt his arm there, Fawley, as he trots after Kernahan. Here's the bounce. Down towards centre wing. Burke over the ball. Had a very good game, Burke. Was taken high. Coughlin in deep trouble. A chance now for the Saints. This is Fode. Collision course there with Reese Jones. It ricochets to McKinnon. Back towards midfield. Carlton have got the numbers. Grant with dash but left it behind. Satori gets it across to Brown. Brown deep into attack. Where's Madden? Over the top. Couldn't hang on. Sheldon gets back. Sensing the danger. Runners to the outer side. He needs to run it up. And then kick to Daniels. The ops instead to go short and pays the penalty. Gleason's taken the mark. Centering kick, Kernahan. Stephen Kernahan today, two goals, two. Five marks, ten possessions. An important kick, this. If he can make the distance and kick straight, the Blues certainly right in it. The breeze more across the ground than favouring St Kilda. Kernahan aiming to the left goalpost, brings it back. So the drama continues. Sheldon. Straight down the middle. Not a good kick. McKinnon. A little slow. Sends it back. Deep into attack. St Kilda three up. This is Winmar. They were lucky to get out of that, the Saints. Hannah, confronted by Coughlin. Well played by Hannah. Got it down to Glasgow. He breaks away. Back into the forward line again. The Blues aren't done with. Madden was up. Couldn't take the mark. Johnston fumbled. Cunningham slings it out to Winmar. And the throw is called. Unfortunate there because Cunningham had a, a fair bit of time to get rid of that one. So Johnston in the right pocket as far as the left foot is concerned 
chance to pull the Blues even closer. He starts on the 50-meter line. Study and concentration. Wayne Johnston. It's close across the face through for a minor score. So the margin now is 12 points. Wayne Johnston again hasn't dominated today. Ten kicks, four hand passes. Left the ground at one stage during the second quarter and doesn't look totally fit at the start of this season. Carlton may be in heaps more bother if they lose here today to St Kilda. They're on the bottom of the ladder, the Blues. Grant dashes through, loses it. Shuffled out by Fode, intercepted there by Bradley. Back to centre half forward. Kernahan wrestling there with Frawley. Sheldon charging straight at it. Kicks mothered courageously. Eventually, Rice a hand pass out. Sheldon off the ground. Centre of the ground is Hunter. Crowd calling for holding the ball. Hannah. Sheldon having a purple patch. Loses it this time to Brown. Inside 50 he goes. Left footer, Dorotich. In front, Cunningham, no mark, Dorotich back to Fraser Murphy, in front, goals! Holden Astra, Sedan, Hatch. Now the manufacturer's performance tests will tell you that Astra's 1.8 litre multi-point fuel injected engine makes Astra 49% more powerful than a laser GL. Faster from 0 to 100 than a Ford TX3 and according to recommended retail price lists, about 3,000 bucks cheaper than a TX3. Maybe that's why Astra's just been named Car Australia's small car of 88. Anyway, they're the facts. You figure out. I know how I feel about it. Australian families have bought their homes with loans from one bank. Which bank? The latest denim direction from Ingenious is black. Black Fabergé. Ingenious. Ingenious. Black's jumping, Black's flash at Ingenious. This is the Holden Astra. And the people at Car Australia magazine obviously love it because they've just named it their small car of 88. Live from 2 o'clock, it's the Brisbane Bears versus the Sydney Swans. Followed at 5 by a replay of the Geelong West Coast Clash, Sunday on 7. Next on Hinch. The search for the fountain of youth is as old as mankind. We've found an Australian town where legend says they had to shoot someone to start the cemetery. The undertaker went broke. The last chap uh, couldn't make a living out of it, so he gave it up 40 years ago. The town of eternal youth, next on Hinch. Harding and Madden. Madden wins it. Winmar too high. They get the free kick. As always, lively. Nicky Winmar unloads with a long kick. Contest about 40 metres out. Low slapping away. Right of the pack, Craven. And now it's Bowie for Dwyer. Can he find target this time? Too long. Dragged off it by Reese Jones. 
What a timely tackle. Craven goes in backwards. Gleason gets it to Reese Jones. Silvani, great composure. Hannah, right half back, he runs it out. Long kick towards centre wing. Turner is up in front, just on the ground. Frawley, Grant, brilliant smother. Johnston's away. Follows up his own good work. Great shepherd from Kernahan, and the kick is marked down there by Naley, just inside the field of play. Well, inspirational stuff there by Wayne Johnston. He's done it too often for anyone to doubt his courage, his ability to Draw. time things. And as you can see, Kernahan and Foley having a bit to do. And that resulted from the shepherd from Kernahan, and now players coming from everywhere. Yes, that was magnificent play there by Wayne Johnson. Had a very quiet afternoon so far, but they're the sort of team lifting efforts you expect from Wayne Johnson. Umpire in there again, having to speak to John Dorotich. And all the while, Mark Naley has the ball on the boundary line in the forward pocket. Difficult shot for goal, but if somehow he can thread this through, again the scores will be level. What a game it's been. The crowd perhaps not as big as it might have been. It's built up so much. It is certainly a very big crowd. But whoever came today, be glad they came. What can Mark Naley do with this? Once kicked four goals in one quarter for South Australia against the Vicks. Banana kick. Threads it. No, just missed. One goal, two to Mark Naley. Five points the difference. Sheldon kicks in, favours the other side. Hunter, Harvey the opportunity, slaps it wide. Bowie going nowhere. Great commitment from Grants and Murphy, and we've got a ball up. 83 to 78. Satori will do the ruck work, opposed to Harding. 2x West Australian, Satori wins it down. Fraser Murphy out of the congestion towards half forward. Johnston the leaper, it falls to Gleeson. Gleeson 35 metres out, follows it up. Turner comes out and meets him. Bradley close to the boundary line, is hustled out of bounds. Well, Carlton have had most of the attack in the last four or five minutes and trail by just five points. Madden in ruck against Harding and Kernahan up very high comes to Naley his left footer back to the goal square Cunningham he's played most of the day on Satori giving away a lot of height off to Sheldon all Carlton here Satori oh he was off by onset the umpire the tackle was Daniels holding the ball against Satori Daniels, one of the five teenagers in St Kilda's lineup today. Up short of half forward. Almost a mark to low. Hunter, what a pressure game this has been. Spectacular as well. Nathan Burke picks up. Spears it to half forward. Dwyer at the back. Oh, Ken Hunter, well done. Superb. Boundary throw in. 50 metres out from the Saints attacking goal. Midway through the term. Low to Winmar. Drag off the kick. It's still good, I think. Just missed. Oh, big roar from the crowd. In the grass. Mickey Winmar. Got it going goalward. We'll see Lockett in his dreams tonight. Silvani. High kick in front of Tory. Coughlin looking for a free, penalised for holding the ball. That's a decision. Here's Hannah towards half forward. Kernahan, great mark. Bradley inside, should have gone to Bradley. Kernahan to take this kick, but Bradley was storming inside him. But now 50 metres, that is the sixth or seventh that's gone against St Kilda today. Seven of them, and that's a lot of territory. Yeah, too many, Dennis. 
He may have been fortunate that the 50 metre wasn't paid when he dragged Coonahan to the ground in the first instance. Steve Kernahan now inside scoring range. If he kicks it, the scores will be level. Carlton will not be denied. It's a good looking kick. Kernahan, goal to Carlton. Where do millions of jets, helicopters, planes, trains and trucks go when they're low on fuel? The same place you do. The EP. BP. On the move. I love my car. It's old. Slow. I never thought about insuring it. What was the point? It wasn't worth that much. Jumped in the car, off down the street. Turn left. There's a car stopped in front of me. Wham! 3,000 bucks down the track. My fault. A Merc. SIO third party property for around 100 bucks. Pity I didn't know about that before. Now, with fuel injection. Mitsubishi Lancer gives you the balance of power. Enough power to pass six Porsches. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Australia's biggest, the annual home improvement and furniture show. The show has an enormous range of renovating ideas and new products. The kitchen, bathroom, living room, extensions, and even do it yourself. It's the Home Improvement and Furniture Show with the largest range of furniture you've ever seen. And it's the show with a massive range of wood heaters. The big, big, big Home Improvement and Furniture Show up now at the Exhibition Building. Now there's a product to positively reduce oil consumption and exhaust smoking. Winds Charge. The long chain polymer in charge boosts oil viscosity. This reduces oil consumption and ugly exhaust smoking. Wind's charge also reduces wear, quiets noisy engines and improves performance. Add wind's charge to your car's engine today because when it's winds, it works. From leading service stations and auto stores. Tonight on 7. Be dear friends, taken before their time. A cold-blooded assassin from MacGyver's past is back for revenge. And Murdoch's just the kind to set these neat, perfect little traps. The man is dead. Is he? MacGyver's trapped in a semi-trailer that's set to blow. Seven minutes. To hell. And his only means of escape are a battery and a pair of pantyhose. That's all we got. Another explosive adventure for MacGyver. 7.30 tonight on 7. Scores back level. Now it's favours Carlton. Bradley thumps over the top. Burke is there. Caught in Naley's tackle. Madden. They put it down, but nobody had hold of him. That player's going to ball it up. Well, Carlton really fighting for their reputation here this afternoon looking for their first win of the season to bounce back from last week comes to Brown Rice juggles a mark haven't been in attack for a while St Kilda good long kick by Rice Satori climbs punches down goes to Hannah and he dashes away from the Millam Hannah great play to Glasgow wide it comes to McKinnon quickly to Doritic he took a while, but gets it up to Madden. To the front, Johnston to Madden. He went backwards, Justin Madden. McKinnon, 40 metres out, right in front. Gleeson, wide of the mark. Grant first there, but it might beat him out of play. And I thought Carlton were going to do better than that. Throw in about 20 metres around from the behind post. 
Good luck, he's in Kilda there. Madden coming back towards the middle. Slowed their progress. He wins it down to Naley, trying to make amends. Back towards full forward. Madden was up again. The force to Craven. Now an opportunity for the Saints. Counter attack. Rice with the run of the ball. McKinnon's after him. Rice on centre wing towards half forward. Carlton have got the numbers through the hands of Hunter. Harvey slung. Reese Jones rides above. Great desperation in there by Bowie. Spills out. Eventually is worked towards the boundary by Bradley. Well done by McKinnon. Got rid of Rice. This is Kennedy. Kernahan. It went the distance. Mayley down towards half forward. Carlton working hard. Too much carry on the kick over the head of Doritich. It bounces out of bounds in the pocket. Wrong option also. Should have centered the ball instead of going into that pocket. Scores level. 30 metres from goal. Madden palms down. Chance here for Craven. He's done well in his second game of VFL football. But on the chest of McKinnon, who's also playing his second. Up towards full forward. Madden with all the height. Dorotich in front. Off hands to Madden. A snap through the packet goes. Grant's back there. Sheldon as well. Hurried kick out of defence. Daniels, clever. Goes for the boundary line with a clever kick. It was a schoolboy footballer last year, and that's well done. Kept his head remarkably well. Jason Daniels. Boundary throw in on the outer side. Harding has tried hard for the Saints. Satori over the top, though. Naley coming into things in this term. Coglin going back with a flight of the ball. Daniels dragged off it. Murphy to Gleason. Gleason long kick down towards full forward. Doritich, great courage. Dropped away from Madden. This is Fode with the run of it. The Saints have got a spare man on this side of the ground. Fode uses him too. And he fell over to Rice. Fode comes back. Well played. Fode from centre wing. Satori. Carlton. Getting the numbers back across half back. Reese Jones to Gleason to McKinnon. End to end football. McKinnon back towards centre half forward. Harding couldn't control it. Opportunity for Grant. The Saints have got the numbers. Johnston tries to knock it out. Coglin gets it across to Daniels. Glascott can pump it back in. Glascott. Long kick. Madden the target. Up he goes. Couldn't hang on. Falls at his feet. Big scramble. Turner wrestling with Doritich. Doritich comes out holding his head. And the umpire will bounce it. Yeah, how tired must some of these players be? Danny Frawley. And for the first time today, Jamie Lamb comes onto the ground for St Kilda to replace Dean Rice. Darrell Baldock hasn't used his interchanges until the fourth quarter. Murphy, straight through. We oh, had it for a fair while. Gleason. No distance with that kick. Still a chance of the Blues, 30 metres out. Naley over his shoulder. Puts the Blues in front with that one. They're doing all the attacking. Lockett hasn't seen the ball for about the last 20 minutes. There's the kick in. Low. This is Foe. The Saints have led just about all day. Carlton lead now. The business end. Towards Lockett. Play on, that was giving a free kick. Oh, gee, that was interesting by the umpire. He was calling play on for a long time, so the tackle on Lockett, after he claimed the mark, was deemed illegal. Lockett, 30 metres out. He's kicking at his ninth. Nine last week. They need nine at least this afternoon. It's good. The Saints are back in front. Oh, that's the one they needed badly. St Kilda. And it's put them five points in the lead again. And a great display again from Tony Lockett. He's been starved of opportunities in this last quarter. Although he's kicked three goals, the ball's been on Carlton's forward line for most of this part, last part of the quarter. And now let's see what Carlton can do, whether they can get back in front.
Nine goals, seven, Tony Lockett. Wayne Johnston has left the ground again for Carlton. Replaced by Strosh. Harding gets a hand pass away to Daniels. Goes long to full forward. Lockett there again. It clears him. The whistle's gone. It's a Carlton free kick to Silvani. He's got to come back to Stephen Silvani. Lockett has had 17 kicks. And Silvani coming up for kick number 12. It's been a great contest between the two champions. But you'd have to say Lockett has won the points. Gleeson puts it wide for Bradley. Playing in a district cricket final two weeks ago, Craig Bradley. Off the left boot. Chance, Carlton, and Madden's got it on his chest right in front. Madden kicked two goals in the second quarter. And a straight kick here, right in front and about 43 metres from goal, will put the Blues back in front. What a game of football. Five minutes left on the clock. And a vital kick for Justin Madden. He's kicked it. Oh, it just got away at the end. And missed. Yeah, it looked good off the boot too from Justin Madden. Very confident kick, but that wind must have dragged it just across at that last moment. Sheldon against his old team. Must be a free kick in front to Winmar. And listen to that crowd. Mickey Winmar at the left half back with the free. Inside the last five minutes now. Four points. That was the margin last season on this ground. Carlton won that one. Winmar tumbles a kick. Dwyer couldn't mark it. This is Reese Jones. Last got sold into trouble. Play on the call. Gleason back to Reese Jones on centre wing. The Saints have got the numbers. Reese Jones should have kicked. This is Coglin. Cunningham keeps it in play. Cunningham, shocking kick. Exposes the Saints now. Bradley takes the mark midfield. A tired kick from Cunningham, no question. Bradley down towards the 50 metre line. Frawley couldn't mark it. Craven, fumble. Murphy. 30 metres out, kicks a goal, the Blues lead. Well, Jeff Cunningham's got his head down. There's no wonder there. He did the good hard work on the boundary line. And then inexplicably went across the ground. And he should have just forced it down to the forward line any way he could. Cunningham's been moved up onto the wing, and I'd suggest he's pretty tired for that role in this last quarter. Lamb's gone to the back pocket. Fraser Murphy has kicked two goals in this last quarter. Carlton have only managed three. The Blues in front. Comes to win now. Aimed for a big long kick. Didn't quite get hold of it. Kennedy in front. Sprague will take the free kick. Carlton by two points. And we've got under three and a half minutes left. Bradley in front. Takes a good mark. Carlton haven't had the lead hardly all day, but they might lead it where it really counts at the end of the match. Gleeson finds Kernahan in between the wing and half forward. Stephen Kernahan goes for distance. Dorotic is down there and marks. No, umpire said play on. Oh, they didn't oh. hear. Well, they just waited for the decision. Naley had it. Comes to Sheldon. Short of the wing. Kernahan a big climb. And the skipper coming good when he's required. 2.40 with the clock running down, remaining in this game. Kernahan started brilliantly. Goes for distance towards the pocket. Madden for the interfere. Play on is the call. This is Fode. They bring it away again. Harding gave him the hand pass. Midfield to Torrey. Clever hand pass, Glasgow's away, forward of centre, a high kick, Turner battling with Madden, wide of the pack, an opportunity for Lamb. They've got the numbers, St Kilda, three on one, Dorotic is working manfully, but Coglin comes away, gives it to Sheldon, Sheldon's kick comes towards centre wing, but the mark is taken by Reese Jones. Goes in short, Gleeson. Inside two minutes now. Adrian Gleeson on centre wing. What a test of the nerves this is. Scores were level at three-quarter time. 
if anything, Carlton kicking into a slight breeze in the last turn. They lead now by two points. Glasscock using up time. Up to half forward. Kernahan the only chance for Carlton. Lamb sees the ball go out. St Kilda need the ball in play as the clock ticks down to 1 minute 18. Boundary throw in. Lamb to Sheldon. Off the side of the boot, Ken Sheldon. Might be all right for Daniels. He charges onto it, gives a great hand pass to Winmar. St Kilda a chance, Winmar looks for Lockett. Be. Tony Lockett can win the game and bring up his 10th goal. How did he mark that? Well, I thought Winmar had done the wrong thing. I thought he should have kept going and had a ping at the goals. 43 seconds left on the clock. Possibly the last chance for St Kilda. They trail by two points. Tony Lockett. Stuff in Kilda. They're showing a lot of lot of courage, a lot of character today. And that'll probably do it for them too. With only 22 seconds left on the clock, Lockett kicks his 10th goal in a magnificent solo performance at full forward against Stephen Silvani. What a finish. Back in the middle. The Saints lead. Can the Blues muster one final thrust? Gleeson goes to ground, pushing the back the call. We're down to 10 seconds. Gleeson, it needs a mark. The Saints have got men all around the ball. It falls forward. Naley can't control it. Three seconds. Ball up. She's all over. The Saints are going to win it. Some quarter of one. Of one by four points. Jubilation at Moorabbin. What a game of football. I don't think through you could see better. Tony Lockett being absolutely swamped here. He has kicked 10 goals, 6, 10, 7. And the Saints have got up by four points. And spare a thought for Carlton. I thought today they were magnificent. But the best side is certainly won. It would have been a football tragedy if the Saints hadn't won that game. But Carlton showed so much guts to keep coming back. And what a game of football. St Kilda kicked 13 goals, 18. That You only need to mention one goal kicker. Tony Lockett finished with 10 goals, 7. Defeating Carlton, who kicked 13, 14. Kernahan kicked 3, Aitken, Murphy and Madden to a piece. But you'll go a long, long way before you see a better quarter of football than that. Tremendous stuff. We'll take a break and be back with Scott Palmer in just a moment. Look, I've got to tell you I'm lost. Ralph. Mm hmm Look at this, will you? Electricity, water rates, the dentist. Ralph, we're both working. We've got the money. So where is it? The phone bill, I thought you were going to pay that out of your cheque account. Well, there's no money left in it. Well, use the other one. No, I can't touch that for about another month. But it's your money, Ralph. Yes, but then the interest yeah, won't but it's get... still your money. When the State Bank launched the state banking system, it put 400,000 Victorians back in control of their money with a high interest account that can even have overdraft. OK. Well, let's pull some out of your interest-bearing deposit. If you're still out of control, come and see us. You've got to wait 90 days for that one. So what were you saying about your money? The state banking system. We never forget. It's your money. You've got to get your own hold. It's a run-out. I can't afford it. Read my lips. It's the Chimera run-out. Oh, mate, I don't know. It's made for you. Plenty of room, fuel injection. Goes like the clappers. Mean on the juice, but... A new Chimera. Brand new. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. Like it? You love it! <laughs> oh, you love it! The Holden Chimera run-out is now on at your Holden dealer. Slowly but surely, 
We've watched the prices of most things climb high and high and high. But this year, the price of VFL club membership tickets means that the cost of going to a VFL game has actually come down and down and down. Ask your club or the VFL about club membership tickets and don't just barrack for your club. Support it. That is a sweet tune, Sal. That's my daughter's car. Daughter's? She uses Castrol GTX? No, boss. No? She uses GTX too. You mean GTX as well? No, boss. GTX 2. Young persons only want the latest. GTX 2 is improved, maximizes engine protection, because Castrol's the oil specialist. That was a close one, so. Improved Castrol GTX 2. Oils ain't oils. Goyles ain't goyles. At the Melbourne Big, we believe there are better ways to do things. We leave listings open for months longer to make the most up-to-date buying guide available. We keep in touch with our customers to stop dead listings. We combine classifications and use bigger print to make the book easier to use. We didn't have to be Einstein's to know how to list all Melbourne's businesses in one volume. We might not look big, but when it comes to big thinking, we outweigh the heavyweight every time. The Melbourne Big. We're too smart to be thick. I think you'll agree, so far in Saturday Night Replay, we've seen some great highlights from two very good football matches. But there were three other games played today, and let's have a look at those highlights and results with Dixie Marshall. Fitzroy dominated play in the first quarter, controlling the ball around the centre and capitalising on opportunities upfield, on this occasion resulting in a strong mark to Ross Lyon. Collingwood looked a different side at the start of the second term, seemingly regrouped after the break. The Magpies' revival was due in no small part to their ability to win the ball from the centre bounce. After drawing to within two points of the Lions, Paul Broderick booted one of two useful goals for the quarter. Just on time on, Collingwood hit the front for the first time. That lead was to be short-lived as the Magpies were most noticeable by their absence early in the third term. Paul Ruse had the perfect sit on Michael Gaifer to accept a ball burster in the goal square. But a goal to Graham Wright and another to the masterful Peter Dacos just before three-quarter time brought Collingwood back into the game. In an exciting last quarter, Brian Taylor was strong, but the Lions were stronger, answering all Collingwood could throw at them to win by four goals. At VFL Park, North Melbourne came out breathing fire. Their hard-hitting tactics reflected on the scoreboard. This was Paul Spargo's stylish contribution. But Hawthorne were not to be denied. Their slick teamwork was always evident. Ian Felly was North's most creative forward, roving the pack well. Up the other end, Peter Curran was equally effective. Opportunist goals from Dean Anderson and Gary Bacanara had the Hawks in control. At three-quarter time, they led by 38 points. In the final term, the Hawks stretched their lead to clinch a 69-point victory. At the MCG, boom recruit John Georgiatis appeared set to repeat last week's sizzling debut when he goaled in the first 90 seconds. But Richmond's tenacity surprised Footscray and the Tigers opened up a two-goal lead midway through the first term. Georgiatis's second goal allowed the Bulldogs to retrieve the initiative by a slender five-point margin at quarter time. Simon Atkins was a contender for mark of the match, while Philip O'Keefe left no doubt this was goal of the day. Powell was an outstanding contributor for Richmond. Besides being dangerous around the goal, he also provided Hogg with many opportunities. Hogg's fourth goal gave the Tigers a 10-point lead at the main interval. In the third quarter, Kevin Butler lookalike Stuart Griffith posted his third goal. While Hogg, unbeatable at full forward, kicked his seventh. The match had developed into a football lesson for the lethargic Bulldogs, with Richmond slamming on 11 goals for the quarter. Footscray lifted their game marginally in the final term, but the damage had been done. Richmond running out jubilant 78-point winners. Today's game is part of the Carlton and United Brewery 1989 Premiership season. Well, I'm quite sure that the Sunday press will have all the football news tomorrow morning, but we might take a sneak preview and just scoop it for now with their sporting editor, Scott Palmer. Scotty, good evening. Good evening, Sandy. Welcome into the room. Scotty, I would imagine that if you're the uh, comedian, 
at the St Kilda Social Club tonight, you'll be playing to a full house, or should I say packed house? <laughs> you would, Sandy. They're going for their third win in a row, the first time since 1966, their premiership year. Really? Yeah, in 1978 they got two wins and then drew one, but they reckon they've got a great chance of winning a hat-trick this year. And Scotty, I believe now with two wins under their belt, they're starting to flex their muscles just a little bit with the league. You wouldn't believe it. Now they want to change their game on the 22nd of March against uh, April against Collingwood to the, either the MCG or VFL Park because they don't think Victoria Park will get their people in there. <laughs> Scotty, on a serious note, I guess Daryl Baldock would have been absolutely elated. He said we almost kicked the game away, but he said it was just wonderful the way they came from behind in the last quarter. And at half time, he gave Tony lessons, some secret kicking lessons. He told Tony to lean back and follow through with his big foot. And the result was... Ten goals, seven, and one miss. Yeah, it's a fantastic performance. Scotty, of course, Carlton put up a great effort, particularly in that last quarter. It just wasn't good enough. What did Robbie Walls have to say after the game? Well, he was pleased that the Blues go, had a red-hot go. He said it wasn't their fault they lost. They gave everything. They can hold their heads high. But he was a bit upset about some of the press blokes. He called one of them a parasite. And even his captain, Stephen Kernahan, wasn't too pleased being asked questions after the match either. So there's a bit of tension there in the uh, Blues camp to... Uh, uh, Alexander. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Richmond because that too was a big win, but I believe, Scotty, at a cost. Yes, well, Dale Waitman's in hospital after a heavy tuss tussle today. He's got cracked ribs and Justin Pickering is also in hospital with a broken jaw, so it's bad luck for Kevin Bartlett. He said that third quarter when they kicked 11 goals five was the best he's had as a coach. What happened to Footscray, Scotty? Mickey Maltes said we had no running players and Richmond led to the ball all day. He and Nick Collin were in very deep conversation after the match and they weren't too happy either. There were some angry words spoken about the performance today. Speaking, of, speaking of anger, Scotty, uh, there was quite a bit of it out at Windy Hill today. In fact, I think there was only one player reported, uh, Rod Grinter, but it was a pretty spiteful first half. Did well, you hear from John Northey? Well, everyone's trying to play that Grinter report down. Of course, he was uh, allegedly struck uh, Daisy Williams out there. John Northey said, you know I can't talk about reports, and he did not believe it was a spiteful game. Uh, Kevin Sheedy said, his players just concentrate on the ball and let the other stuff go. But uh, Williams is uh, suffering concussion tonight, and the South Australian, uh, Andrew Underwood, he's in the Royal Melbourne too with concussion. So it must have been a hair hairy game out there at times in that second quarter. Fitzroy would be a happy club tonight? Very happy, and so is uh, Collingwood, of course, because for the first time, no reports and no injuries, according to Lee. <laughs> but apparently, uh, Rod Austin said, our self-esteem is now with us now, and we can look to a better year. And Scotty, just in closing, Hawthorne, too good for North Melbourne, but the Hawks have more back problems, do they? Yes, Chris Mew's got a back problem, that's Dermot Breton as well. But Alan Jeans was very pleased with the young blokes. But uh, North Melbourne suffered, they've got uh, Ben Harris, uh, Darren Harris, I mean, with a knee ligament that could keep him out for six weeks. They've got Paul Spargo with a hamstring for four. And, uh, of course, uh, John Law is, as well for four. So they're going to have some injury problems through the week. Scotty, thank you for your time and keep punching. See you, mate. Scott Palmer, of course, from the Sunday Press. All those details and more tomorrow. That's it for tonight. Hope you've enjoyed the show. And we've got more football tomorrow here on 7. It's a big sporting weekend. I hope you can stay with us. For now, good night to you all. A couple of goals scored early. 35 metres around from the Geelong goal. Burke over the top to Morgan. Morgan swings onto the left foot as he kicked his second goal. That's a great looking kick. It's a goal. That's the goal of the day. That's a fine kick. Darren Morgan on his left foot again. Particularly the uh, circumstances there. And Geelong making better move uh, in their forward area. Now they've kicked five points. They're looking more dangerous as they go forward. With the Eagles just falling down a little bit across half forward. Good tap from Burke. That's a clever kick from Darren Morgan for his second goal. Two goals to Darren Morgan. Certainly that the more spectacular of the two. 17 plays eight at Cadinia Park. Geelong after a slow start early. They've got their game going now. Looping hand pass by Russell. Doesn't quite find the mark. And the Eagles, ooh, May wearing cock one. He wore it pretty well. Malaxos drives them forward. Not for very long. And the mark is taken by Yates. He's been a solid defender for the Cats for quite a few years now after missing a whole season with uh, an Achilles injury. Three kick for Geelong. We're in the back. It'll go to Damien Burke. Just as Turley was breaking away with the ball. Plenty of distance in that kick too by Burke. He can kick it a long way. Scott or Main wearing. No, they can pick it up. Scott's on the bottom of the pack trying to scoop it out. Morgan comes up with it. And the umpire has cut the free kick out for Pike. He 
Ritchie will take inside defensive 50. Wide to McKenna. In front of Bairstow. Worsfold on the wing. Marking in front of Yates. Looking for options, none there. Decides on distance with the kick in front. McCrabb went up one-handed and made it look an easy mark. But he's paid a free kick to the Eagles. Shepherding yeah, running. shepherding it was, Peter, against David O'Connell. Again, looks for distance with the kick. Well, that could have been almost in the back. Knocked away by Mark Boss. Pike again, looking dangerous. Turley has a snapshot, and that's gone pretty close. And the umpire says full points. Well, it's better work from the West Coast Eagles and Craig Turley kicking his left foot, a natural right foot kick, and a very deliberate shot at goal there from Craig Turley. It brings him uh, back into the contest, and that's their most positive move so far. Well, three points the difference, and uh, young Pike, number one, Don Pike is in brilliant form for the Eagles. He's in everything, as is Malaxos. 17 plays 14. This is a good start by the Eagles. Slight breeze going Geelong's in. That was Denham down towards looking for Morgan. Here's Johnny Anir waiting over the back. Oh, that was gutsy play by Anir. Determined play, but it's gone straight to David Cameron. He's tried to hook it back. Brownless should mark this. Now, it might have been over the line. The boundary umpire was about 50 metres around. I don't think you could have seen that anyway. Now, Brownless is right on the line. You get the distance, Peter, is a great oh, kick. One of the longest kicks in the in the game, Billy Brownless, but this will be a miraculous goal if he can kick it from there. She's right on the boundary line. This is close. It's through. Well, as you called it, Peter, Bill Brownless uh, would need a, a fine kick from there to put it through. Be allowed very well for that gentle breeze. The ball curved back nicely for him. That'll give him some confidence. And it gives Geelong also the chances to get back in front uh, by a good margin. Nine points. Well, he needs some confidence after last week. I'm told it wasn't his best game for the Cats. The goal always helps. 23 to 14, Geelong in front. Morgan two and Brownless one. The goal kickers for the home side. Sean Denham has come up with the ball. It's a Geelong free kick. I don't know whether it's uh, Denham's. No, it's not. It's going to stump. He's got his hands full with the Eagles captain at uh, the moment. Down towards half forward. Three of them missed it. No one comes up with it. Knock on by Cameron. It's a scramble right on 50. And it will be a bounce. Yeah, but there's no doubt that uh, all forwards, particularly full forwards, like to get a goal early. If they don't get one on the first quarter, they start to worry where the next one's coming from. <laughs> Experience speaking. No doubt about that. I've got two of them here to contend with. And that was a high tackle on Russell, surely. And Wayne Russell will take the free kick. And uh, 55 to 60 metres out from goal. He's definitely a quicker player this year, Pete. As he must have sinned down a little bit, perhaps. That's a beautiful spiral putt. Magnificent kick distance-wise. Morgan for goal number three, and he's got it! Well, a perfect opportunity for the young kids watching today's football particularly Rovers, Ruck Rovers, the front of a pack from a congested area. The ball is generally punched forward. We really do uh, defenders try and punch to the side or have the ability to do so in a very tight situation. And Morgan very much in the right spot there, as you can see on the replay. And a fairly simple goal.